Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and we've got so many new knives this week that you're getting a bonus episode. This one focusing on some of the cool customs and high-end stuff that doesn't always make the cut for our regular show. So, let's check them out. So we're very proud of the custom knives and high-end stuff that we carry here at the Knife Center, but they don't always make our regular new knives episode because quantities on them sometimes limited to just one piece. So they might have already been sold by the time we're filming in any given week. So we don't always get a chance to show off some of the cool stuff where we're going to take that opportunity today. Again, being the nature of what they are, these might be sold by the time you see this video, even if it's right after the video is posted. You know, obviously we don't film things the very same day you see them, so things can happen in the intervening time. But this is just an opportunity to take a look at some of the cool stuff. The most recent stuff, I should say. This is not a comprehensive collection of all the customs we have in stock right now, but some of the coolest of the most recent stuff. Let's start with one of my favorite designers, Brad Zinker. Start on the small side. This is a custom DZ Tonto liner lock. Full custom, handmade by the man himself, coming in at 695 really cool little piece. We've got CPM 154 steel, 2.3 inches on the blade length, really cool Tonto profile with a sharpened back edge even as well. Bit on the obtuse side, it's not like super keen, but could be rougher chisely type stuff, but it actually does actually hang on a second. It comes just shy of being a full sharpened edge. You probably could get in there with the stone if you wanted to give it a full sharpened but it'd be a nice chisely or scrapey point nonetheless, even without any mods. Really cool little piece, marbled carbon fiber for the handles, jeweled titanium liners. Check out that cool detailing there on the liner lock. Typical Brad Zinker style pocket clip and such a neat little package when folded. Actually flips really easily. Sometimes small knives, it's harder to get the flipping action right. This one is oh so right. Really, really sweet little daily utility piece. That's a bit different from pretty much all the other small flipper knives out there. Keep on the smaller side and keep with carbon fiber for a minute. Tim Britton, one of the finest custom slip joint makers out there. Uh, this is a custom cigar jack for 375. Fairly reasonable, honestly, for a full custom knife like this. BG42 steel, hand rubbed satin finish. Got that spear point blade shape about two and a half inches. Uh, BG42 steel, I mentioned that already. Thought for a second, have I mentioned the steel? Yes, I have. Carbon fiber handles, nice back spring, finished real nicely. No half stop on this model, but the closing is so nice. It's just got that perfectly smooth travel the whole way across. It's not jerky or, or rigid or anything that you don't want it to be. It's just about perfect. This is not the only Tim Britton we've got in stock right now, but again, we're focusing on some of the latest right here. Superb little gentleman's knife, very classy and definitely heirloom quality too. All right, now we're really gonna jump up in price on this next one, which is the only knife on the table right now where the blade is closed. That's because it's a surprise. This is a Chuck Gadreitis Switch Army Knife. Takes, uh, takes it away a little bit from the archetype uh, that he has done some, some red handled versions of this, which even more so lean into the Swiss army knife vibe. Now he calls this a switch army knife because when you push on the, what we call that? The front cover there, right? Up at the top, push it back. We've got an automatic opening clip point blade on this bad boy. How cool is that? Clip point shape rather than like a traditional Swiss army knife Spear point style blade, CPM 154, just over three inches. Fantastically useful blade day to day. Liner locking, so it, you do have some protection there. And with the neutral Swiss Army style handle, works in just about any grip you can think of. Very versatile, gets out of its own way when you need to cut. Unlock the knife when you're done. Loaded, uh, you're locked and loaded essentially now for the firing position, and you've even got toothpick and tweezers in the back in traditional kind of Swiss Army style as well. Really cool. Pretty unlikely to come open in your pocket too, even though, though there's no external safety, because you have to be very deliberate in the angle and direction you push and the type of pressure you apply to get that to work. In fact, if 
I hand this to some people around the knife center, even Thomas there behind the camera. It was very confusing. If you don't know, it's really hard to figure out how to open it. So nice bit of safety from uh, you know greedy little fingers as well. But once you figure it out, it's very, very satisfying. And if I didn't mention the price on this already, 1500 bucks. So hang on to your wallets, folks. All right, next up, less expensive and still quite expensive, I should say, but much less expensive, much less expensive than it probably should be. This is a very impressive piece from George Muller. It's a custom LLH, tons of detail here, which I'll get into. And the price on this is only 850. For this level of custom work, Thomas would have guessed at least a thousand more, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But not worth more than your truck right now. We have it this priced. This is true. <laughs> really cool knife. Three inch blade, Vinland Damascus, uh, Damasteel blade. Really nice. Excellent features on the handle. We've got a twisted Damasteel bolster, copper fat carbon or gold matter fat carbon scales. Got liners on the back, dual liners. Essentially, you've got this strip of red here and then I believe that's uh, titanium on either side of the back spacer there. File work on those two liners, which have been anodized as you can see. Really excellent details going on, very nice. The lockup is excellent, it feels good in the hand. One thing that this style of knife, I think sometimes a trap that some can fall into is things get really thick. This is nice and svelte in all the right ways. The other cool thing, Flipper tabs. I feel like there's a, a running competition and who can make the smallest flipper tab out there that's still functional. This one right now, I think takes the cake for me. I mean, look at that tiny little, little guy sticking out the back right there, but still fully functional. Very easy to grab onto. Like you're not gonna miss it. It just rests very naturally and works very naturally too. But on top of that, this knife also has a front flipper. Again, very <laughs> tiny little patch to hold onto. And even for me, who's not great at front flippers, it still works. I was able to hook my index finger over the top and get it. I can even do just a standard thumb front flip real easily, despite it's like there's almost nothing there to grab onto. And yet there still is plenty to grab onto. Very cool. Got another George Muller. This is a custom LLA for 650, slightly larger knife. We're dealing with an L Max blade, uh, three and three eighths high polished finish, which of course is Thomas's favorite because it makes his photographing job oh so lovely. We get to see a little Yay. bit. You guys are always wondering what Thomas looks like. Can we get a little, are we seeing, seeing you over there? That's exactly what I look like. That's, that's it, that's all you get. <laughs> He's very blurry all the time. It's the alcohol. Um, really cool knife here as well. Twisted Damasteel bolsters layered uh, fat carbon, black matter fat carbon handles. I had to make sure I get the uh, spec right. Similarly, we've got two sets of liners, essentially one liner behind the scales and one full length liner behind the entire handle length with file work. And let me just check this other one. Yeah, actually both of these bolsters are dovetailed as well. Very nicely fit together. What's kind of cool about the anodized liners on this particular knife is looking here at the back, it's got a little bit of a blue sheen, but as you turn it over towards the front, we're dealing with gold, same piece of metal. You can see there the transition. We've got the blue onto the gold, right onto the front. Very sweet. Pocket clip on this one, as opposed to uh, no pocket clip carry on the LLH. You can see it's got a very cool and tropic style finish going on. Liner lock on this knife as well. And this one is front flipper only, and this one I was having a little bit more trouble with than the LLH, even though there's technically more there to grab onto. Felt a little, yeah. Everything's gonna be different depending on your hand size, of course. There we go. Takes a little bit more getting used to for me at least, but the build quality just absolutely superb for these knives, especially considering all that you don't have to pay to get it. All right, next up, Checking things higher up for a little bit. A Marfione Custom Protocol Flipper. Two and three quarter inch M390 blade. We've got ironwood handles, double vapor blasted titanium scales or titanium bolsters here. It's got kind of a satin finish on the front, but when you look at the spine, 
and the leading edge here. It's got kind of a rougher orange peel style texture going on. We've got what looks to me like a copper backspacer. I like the pivot ring incorporating some of that iron wood blade itself. Another cool mirror polish. There's your quick get your flash of Thomas right there. Uh, really cool little blade shape frame lock flipping action. Quite good. Quite good. Can we do the, uh, the middle finger flick thing? Of course not. Hey, of course, I mean, is what I meant to say. Another really cool blade. Now I'm gonna have to clean the, uh, the fingerprints off for Thomas to, That's uh, on you. to <laughs> get his close ups. Uh, $2,500 for this. You can almost buy two of Thomas's truck for one of these knives. Almost. Almost. Not quite. Not quite. We're getting there. Very classy piece. Feels really stout too, despite being, you know, maybe we'll call it a slightly smaller knife overall. Like I said, two and three quarter inches on the blade, but feels like you could really get some work done if you can bear, bear the thought of putting some scratches on that mirror polish. All right, next up we have technically not a custom. I think everything up to this point has been a like a full on custom. This is an Olamic busker. And these are all things, even the things that aren't like full 100% customs, these are all things that would potentially show up on our weekly customs newsletter, which goes out these days every Thursday. Make sure you're uh, signed up for that if you're interested in more stuff like these. The cool thing about Olamic is even though these are production knives, mid tech, whatever you want to call it, each one is different. They try not to duplicate the same finish, the same style from one to the next. So you, you are getting something truly in between just a, a mass produced item and a full on custom level thing, which is pretty cool. This one right here, uh, like I said, it's the Busker 695 for this guy, M390 steel, two and a half inches, crazy blade shape, but still a very useful looking blade shape. Kind of an orange peel textured titanium with a antique and tropic acid rain finish. It's the other thing with Olamic, they come up with some really cool names for their finishes as well. Floating backspacer there at the back, blue titanium it looks like, milled flat pocket clip with posts and a nice ball bearing there for the pinch point. Now this is a front flipper knife. I haven't, actually haven't tried to front flipper this yet. Let's see, let's see. Just fine, just fine with that tab sticking up the front there. And then of course you've also got the thumb hole cut out in the blade so you can do just your standard opening. You can also do that little flick thing. Just overall very cool pieces. And again, each one of these is gonna be one of a kind. All right, next up we've got an ADV. This is the Andre de Villiers Harpoon F17. Very cool finish on this one, 650 bucks. Normally on, on a lot of the ADV big flippers like these, they tend to feel more like either aggressively tactical or like high tech space age. This one kind of nods into a little bit of an old school vibe, which you don't see, or, or at least I feel like you don't see as much on his larger knives than you might on some of his smaller knives, for example. Really cool, uh, N690 blade, about 3.8 inches with a Cerakoted finish. Handles, of course, are titanium with a gold finish, but we say gold, but on the front there, it looks a bit more like copper in a way to me. It has kind of that rustic patinaed vibe to it, which pairs really nicely with the bone inlay there on the front. Pretty wide bone inlay, in fact. Very cool looking piece. Apart from that, it is the harpoon flipper that you probably know and love at this point. Really aggressive looking blade dual fullers on each side with a cool lasered pattern on the Cerakote on the inside there. Really cool looking milled titanium clip with a roller cylinder essentially for the pinch point there. You don't see too many folks doing something like that. Strong feeling frame lock, kind of an overbuilt knife in a good way. Really excellent flipping feel, ball bearings in the pivot. Overall, just a super aggressive gentleman's knife, question mark. I put it to you. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. All right, speaking of overbuilt, we've got a couple new Medfords right now, but I'm gonna flip the script a little bit and go with one of his slimmer knives as opposed to one of the uh, chunkier knives in the lineup. This is the Praetorian Slim from Medford. Comes in at 620 bucks. For that, your blade is three and a quarter inches long with S35 VN steel, compound ground Tonto profile with a sloping spine very useful type of Tonto day to day. It's not too aggressively chisel shaped in the front. As far as Tontos go, if you're generally not a Tonto person, maybe you're more of a, a drop point guy like myself, 
this would still be a very suitable blade shape. It's not too aggressively chisely out there at the front. You've still got that spine where you can do things like lifting the tip trick when you're uh, getting underneath something, trying not to cut what's below. Very cool. Slimmer to carry than a lot of Medfords. Titanium handles, a few nice little blue accent points along the otherwise black PVD coated frame and blade. Frame lock. No ball bearings in this pivot. They go for the more dust resistant washers. And well, actually, I was about to say, you can't really flip this knife, but you do have, as part of the tang, you've got a, a glass breaker point there. I don't know, can you use it as a front flipper? Someone out there might be able to, but I cannot. <laughs> you can, however, middle finger flick, thanks to the dual fuller opening. And that essentially is the uh, kind of the signature Medford opening method. You can get in there with a single thumb right near the, the end, kind of ride up the track as you do a traditional open, or you can do that flick like I just showed you. Next, we've got a smaller but thicker Medford. This is the Aris Compact, and you can see what I mean by the normal, uh, kind of, this, this, this smaller knife has the more normal or the more accustomed to Medford thickness to it. 475 for this one titanium frame with the frame lock D2 steel two inch blade in this case. Very aggressive little blade too. Again, we're dealing with washers in this pivot as well. It's got that kind of telltale action. Let's see, can we do a middle finger flick? This is gonna be tricky because my hands are slightly larger than average and this is a smaller than average knife. Yeah, I didn't make it too far. It's not a demerit against the knife. There we go. It's not really designed, I don't think, for that type of opening, but Make it work with a little practice, it looks like. Mostly you're just gonna be doing a slow roll opening. But look at how stout that blade thickness is there, right at the tang side there. Lot of strength despite the otherwise small side size. And not the only two Medfords we have in stock right now at least either. Make sure to check out the link below. All right, next up, we've got a little fixed blade and this might be might be one of my favorites this week. Definitely top three, I would say. This, the Switch Army knife, and that first molar we looked at are probably my favorites. This is a Brock Blades Custom Combat Options Double D Fixed Blade. A lot of name, a lot of knife in a small package too. 295 for this, and I love the handle here. It's G10, it's got kind of a scalloped texture to it, but the shape, it's not a full four finger grip, it's kind of a three and a half finger but the shape with the swell here, it nestles in to my palm just so, so well. It lets you have a really solid hold on this longer blade than you might expect for that size handle. Nearly four inches, we're like three and seven eighths. Lot of utility, a lot of control over that blade length with this smartly designed handle here. Really dig that, makes it a great EDC option where you can get a lot of blade and not have to deal with too much handle, but without giving up the control. The other cool thing about these the blade is titanium. This is not a steel blade. You can, the telltale thing here, you can see along the bottom of the hollow grind on the front side here, a carbidized edge. And that those carbides embedded in the titanium is what's gonna hold the edge on this particular blade. And smartly done, you can actually sharpen this too because you've got a single sharpened edge on the back side. So as you sharpen away, you take away some of the, uh, the metal from this side, you're still inside the carbonized edge there. So you've got a little bit of life to this. You don't have you know, a full, full blade life like you might if this were full steel, but still very cool and a very good way to kind of prolong the longevity of a knife like this. Great little shape, kind of a, one of those almost do everything shapes I, I would kind of say. Maybe not hunting so much, but it could be done. Great everyday utility, kind of do some pokey stabby stuff if you need to. I like the little bit of file work there, right where your thumb would rest, gives you a little bit of extra traction. The balance is phenomenal being titanium, it's so lightweight. I mean, the knife itself, 2.5 ounces for four inches of blade, very cool. You can do those heavier grips thanks to those handle designs and things like a pinch grip also feel utterly fantastic with this guy. Can't go on enough, I really can't. But I will stop a little bit or else we'll run out of film, which is just an SD card nowadays, but that's okay. Kydex sheath snaps in really nicely. Large tech lock will fit one of these things very well. All right, next up, we have technically a production knife, but as a production version of the custom Hellraiser from Red Horse Knives, the Hellraiser P. 
liner locking folder, 253, 252 and change for these knives. With it, you've got S35 VN steel, three and five eighths of an inch long with a highly stylized kind of straight razor, curved straight razor aesthetic to it. I think we call it a cleaver. Do we call it a cleaver on the on the uh, the website? We might. I know what I'd call it. What would you call it? Reverse Santa. No, that's a cheese knife for you, buddy. Your cheese knives aren't reverse Santos. Moving on, as always. Very nice handles. We've got a red marbled carbon fiber. This particular blade has a PVD stone washed finish. There's also satin and a straight black non tumbled finish. As you can see that that thumb stud action on these is really satisfying. I mean, just the sound has a great quality to it as well. Ball bearings, lots of style. Very cool. Also, this is actually the first time I've seen any fixed blades from Red Horse. I know they make them, but I haven't got my hands on any of them so far. This is the Malice Karambit, 196 for this one. CPM D2 blade steel, so you've got the particle metallurgy version of the, you know, just common D2, elevates the performance a bit. Nice and thick for thrashing, abusing, that sort of thing, G10 handles. And if your hands are my size, this is a reverse grip only thing, which is of course a traditional karambit grip. But if I go to flip around, my first two fingers are really cramped in this, uh, this non ringed section. It's sized perfectly. Honestly, it actually is sized perfectly for my hand size in a reverse grip. Let's you really access the acute point on that hawkbill blade shape. And the ring here, rather than being just a simple safety ring, you've got essentially a concentrated force point there on the front. You could use this for striking if you had to, but it definitely feels super stout. The sheath is a wide kydex square shape, slips in or uh, snaps in. You've got a J hook style of arrangement, which is attached by a single point. So you could angle this around wherever it carries naturally for you. Perhaps the wide flat nature of this kydex is going to work well inside the waistband. I'm not sure I haven't tried it. I don't make a habit of uh, putting inventory inside my pants, as I'm sure you folks are pleased to know. All right, next up, continuing in kind of the, uh, the overbuilt Medford tradition in a way, shall we say, uh, Scorpion 6 Custom Overfall 222 folder for $1,150. Handle, we've got that chunky titanium with a stone washed finish, milled out with some slots and some texture on the front. Interesting here, we've got a bit of a chamfer on the, or starting here and minimizing as it goes towards the tail. It almost creates the visual trick of it seeming like the handles are spreading further apart, which of course they are not, but it's just one of those kind of fooling of the eye things. Very full, aggressive, milled titanium clip, very sturdy. And speaking of sturdy, check out that wild looking blade. Three and a half inches, CTS XHP steel, compound ground. Thomas, would you like to call this a reverse Tonto? Mm, looks a little more like a sheep's clip. It is a little more sheep's clip. Yeah, I will say that. And that's, that's okay. And now he's just messing with me, folks. It's not hard. <laughs> it's almost a reverse Tonto cleaver-ish thing. Cheese knife. Modified. Modified. Always just throw a modified in there. It fixes everything. That frame locks up the blade very securely. I mean, you've got a massive hunk of titanium on steel there. Check out the cool thumb stud there. It's kind of raised and flared out. Let's see, we can still flick open pretty nicely. We are dealing with ball bearings in this particular pivot. Overall, just another fantastically solid feeling knife. All right, last up, we're ending with a couple fixed blades. First is the Beagler Blade Works Signature Series Covert. $360 for this particular knife. This is one of those knives where yes, you could absolutely use this for daily utility, but this thing has kind of slicey pokey stabby written all over it in my mind. Uh, D2 blade steel, tumbled finish, recurve Tonto with a flaring tip so that you've got actually a lot of steel right behind that point. Not gonna be a weak tip at all. Cool thing with the swedge here, it's actually a convex ground swedge. Something that I see very, very little of, like vanishingly little of, in fact. It's a cool little feature. 
has a nice little kind of custom level touch to it because of course that is a little harder to do than some of the other grinds out there. G10 for the handles, this is the OD green version, kind of a, another flared shape going on here. Works well in a standard grip, feels even better in my hand in a reverse grip, in fact. A lot of cutting potential in that blade, thanks to that recurve too. Got a lot of kind of hooking power and that aggressive tip there near the transition for some extra shearing going on. Excellent little finger guard there to protect you as you work. Nice place here for your thumb to rest in a forward grip if you're putting a little pressure on the spine. That way you're not getting up onto the thinner edge behind that convex swedge. It's overall very cool. The included sheath is Kydex that you can see right there. Attachment method is this leather strap right here. It comes with, it doesn't say pull the dot on the front, but this is a unidirectional snap. It's only gonna come off in the one direction. You can't really pry it off to the side there. But this gives you some real nice options for across the body carry, whether you know, smaller your back or cross draw over the front. As far as other attachment methods, uh, you may have to come up with something of your own. These holes aren't quite spaced just right for uh, a large or a small tech lock. So just keep that in mind when you're making your purchase as well. And last, but absolutely not least, far from it in fact, a Jason Knight forged fuller chopper right here. 2195, decimal point zero, zero. Don't, don't get excited folks. Very, very impressive piece right here. 12 and a quarter inches of 80 CRV2 forged steel. You can see the raw finish there on the sides. Recurved kind of like a Kukri, but I wouldn't call this a Kukri in particular. You've got a handle design, kind of a, can almost call that a, a modern style Kukri. There's obviously some, uh, some heavy Bill Moran influences on that handle shape as well. Some scalloping or texturing here at the front, which has all then been sanded over and softened. So it's not creating real like sharp points as you grip the knife. Looks like red G10 pins as well tapered tang for, of course, the balance, keeping the weight out there towards the front for a heavier hit. Man, just so cool. The uh, swedge on here is very nearly coming down to a fully sharpened point. If you wanted to, you could definitely do it, but as it comes, it's not a sharpened edge. I mean, you can see just how close it gets right there. Just wicked cool overall. The balance, the fit and finish feels great. The style, I mean, that is just undeniable. All right, that's all I have to show you today for our custom knife roundup. Let me know what you thought of the knives in the comments and make sure to check out uh, the links below for these knives if they're still available and our full selection of customs. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're over at the website because if you're gonna put your money down on one of these knives, especially when they're expensive as these are, you might as well earn some free money back to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.